All right, time to fix the biggest barrier to me going fishing. Uh, and that is this windshield. It's all smashed. Uh, it's looking like it started here. This stuff rusted and then it expanded, cracked, and then it just spidered it. This, is, this has probably been cracked for about a year, but it's gotten so bad, I need to replace it. Uh, I hesitate to use the car because if I get stopped, then they're not going to let me drive it, and then I have to try to get it fixed. The problem with getting it fixed is you can see all this rust. Well, I've kind of fixed, patched this part up, but this section here, and then even worse over there, over there, underneath here, all has to be repaired. Um, so the challenge is I just can't get the windshield replaced on its own because I still have those other problems. It, when it rains, it leaks right into the car. So what I needed to happen was the windshield to be removed, me getting some time to rust repair the edges and then have the windshield put on. The problem with it is, is that there's, I only found one company that comes down to the keys to install windshields. Uh, the Safe Right or Safe Light, whatever that main company doesn't come to the Keys. I couldn't find anybody else that was still actively doing wind chills down here in the Keys. And then that other company is just hard to get a hold of. Um, so, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take the windshield out myself, just smash it out, cut it out, um, and then do my repairs. Then take it, drive it without the windshield up to Miami and uh, have them do it up there so that's the plan i'll probably just do like a stealthy drive up there four or five in the morning when there's no traffic and it's still dark where you can't see that i don't have a windshield be up there by sunrise and then they can install the windshield so that is the plan uh it's kind of a hassle but uh what we're going to do is i'm just going to bust this glass out i'm not going to be real dainty about it to try to pull it out i'm just going to hammer it out and then use a multi-tool vibrating tool to cut out and then uh, so i can just put my time into fixing all this rust issues so let's get into it took off the rear view mirror there took the caps off of the windshield wipers i just got to take these bolts off take those off see where they line up and as you can see corrosion kills everything this whole section just rotted out and that's all rotted there all along there that's the one I repaired the front strut now at least I can get to this one to get it off so I could replace that as well I could do both front struts and they'll be done. But otherwise, this thing is garbage. So, time to get smashing. I think we're prepped to rip this thing out. All right, we are prepped for the major step here. We got all this removed, the rear view mirrors removed. So, it's ready to come out. Now, originally, I put a lot of research into the best way to remove these windshields using all the, the wire, the cutters, and all this stuff. Um, and it did, it was there for a purpose. It was to remove this one, but I was also planning on installing my own windshield and going down to the junkyard and pulling a used windshield and installing that. Uh, two problems there. One is there just wasn't any at the junkyards uh, that I could find. And I could verify that we're there. And then two is this is my only vehicle and this windshield is so huge it wouldn't fit in my car. It's actually wider than the back of this car. Not just the opening, that's not even close, but even the width of the car itself, it's wider. The windshield is wider than that. So there's no way I can get it home. So I kind of kiboshed that. And then that brought me to the best way to remove it would be oops, just to use this guy now I'm just gonna smash it out um, because it has that plastic liner I might have to heat it but then I have my multi tool oscillating tool and then I'll just cut out right along the edge the border there as close as I can get to and then use that either the oscillating tool or just a razor blade and cutting through the uh, the, the glue 
and then uh, just remove it in pieces. So I've got the, an old uh, tarp there. I put a PVC tube all the way across. That's going to kind of hold things together. And yeah, so no time like the present. And just going to work around the edges. I was preferring not having all these little glass shards everywhere, but I've got a shop back that'll hopefully make that easier. It would definitely be easier to take this out all in one, but hey, you never know unless you try. I think I'm going to just shop back this right now and just get all this stuff off of there as soon as I work around the edges. That was rust falling off crazy that's where it bulged all right that should be good enough so let me uh, vacuum this up and then uh, see what the best way to pry this up this thing out of here well I am not liking what I'm seeing And these support pieces here is going to be rough. The glue is actually just pulling off because of the rust, which is making the removal easier, but still, yeah, that's not beautiful. And same issue down here. So I definitely need to put a patch piece there. So hopefully not too many other places like that. But I'm just kind of test running, cutting stuff out. So let me get this wind chilled out. All right, small victories and the agony of defeat. Look at that. Little bit of rush repair needed there. <laughs> but I got it all cut out. Wasn't too bad. Uh, the multi-tool oscillating tool worked. I wish I had a wood cutting blade, not this super fine metal cutting teeth. It would have made it easier. Um, what you have to do is just get a screwdriver and then you would basically once you get cut in cut the glue with a razor blade and then get the oscillating tool under it go as far as it can on the flat piece until it butts up against it because the glass is so heavy it won't flex then you just get a screwdriver and then pry that section off and then you get the oscillating tool do another section pry it off or a lot of these sections where the rust was so bad, it just basically peeled off. I didn't have to do anything. But now this is one big heavy piece of glass. So I gotta figure out how to get it out. I might have to cut it in half. I don't wanna get glass shards everywhere. Uh, and then we can assess the damage. Now, although I've got rust issues all around there, what caused the windshield to crack is this spot. And I've, I've seen, uh, I've been watching videos about how to replace the windshield on these fits. And every one of the cracks has originated, you can see, from this driver's side bottom corner. And this is why. It gets uh, water inside here, it starts rusting. Then it uh, starts expanding. And then that's what cracks the windshield. Uh, if you see the YouTube videos, you'll all see they just start here and then there's a crack just coming out. So, yeah, that's a problem. It just bubbles up there and just puts enough pressure until eventually it cracks it. Mine is a different story. I've got other problems, but these, I don't think, would have cracked. They would have just rusted, but they wouldn't have caused a crack. But this part here, because it's, it's triple metal, it had enough force with all three metals expanding where the rest of them just have one and they're just gonna go until they crumble. So that's the weak spot.
All right, so the next step, we're gonna get this thing cleaned up to see what we've got to work with. Uh, I'm gonna start off by cutting off the old glue sections that are still here, there along the top. Um, once I've got that glue off, then I could get a grinder and just start hitting all the whole section with the grinding wheel just to knock off all the rust flakes and just see what I've got to work with. Um, and then uh, I'll have a better idea what needs to be done. All right, first major step is done, which is basically cutting out all the rot. So we're pretty much good to go. There's just going to be rut, uh, rust and stuff underneath that just not going to be able to get out. And it's not really going to matter because I'm going to build a new layer above. Well, this is okay. Just a few spots there that I have to patch because they're part of the glue line. Uh, but otherwise, these, I've got it down one layer down. So I'm going to add another layer to make it one smooth surface. Patch it here. That's fine. And then same thing on that side. Just a whole new layer there. And then the key component will be done, which is the, uh, the base for the window to get glued into. And that's the majority of the, the what I won't need to have done. And then after that's done, then it's a matter of uh, just patch welding in these sections. And I'm not sure how I'm going to repair this. If I'm going to put a new metal or if I'm just going to fiberglass it. Because they're just cosmetic. I could basically just foam fill it, shave it down, put a couple of layers of fiberglass, and then just bondo the rest of it this side i'll have to i'll weld a patch in to make this one piece again and then uh just the little pieces here i'll weld in some spots and then uh fiberglass use some bondo and primer it and that's just cosmetic that i don't care about and that'll be it um i've already done that to the back the backs were the same thing as those fronts. I had the whole, both corners were gone. I had a hole about the size of a, a basketball here. This whole section was gone. And then I had multiple smaller baseball size holes that I had to patch repair. But over here I welded in a new section. And then the, uh, the flat holes, I just uh, fiberglass. I put a base plastic layer underneath it fiberglass and then bondo so yeah not bad now all the reason i'm stopping is the sun's getting down but i need to run to home depot pick up some uh 22 gauge and 16 gauge metal uh, i'm just going to get a foot sheets they sell at weldable steel and then just cut those up i might have to get a few different ones but i'm going to start with the 16 and the 22 see what matches the best uh, I think 16 for the bodies and the sides and the part where I'm just putting a, a flat layer above here and then the, the 16 gauge, the heavier stuff in these corners where I have to actually build it up and need reinforcements. So yeah, so tomorrow will be the, uh, the mock-up and uh, weld in the core pieces and then... Uh, Probably the day after will be fiberglass bondo primer and then that's pretty much all I need to do But then if I do another day, it'll be smoothing it all out and kind of getting it a little little better looking uh, But yeah, very happy It's a lot worse than I thought it was But it cleaned up pretty good and I see a fixable repair on how to do it and that uh, makes me feel a little bit better so onward to Home Depot. Knowing this was gonna be a multi-day project, plus I'm gonna to have to drive it up to Miami without any windshield, and it always rains at nighttime and so forth. I did a quick car con cover. This worked out perfect. I just have the two corners connected by rope. So it just slides under the car and that's a stopper. So it can't go back any farther. So it just sits in there snug. Then I just loop the tops over. I've got a rope attached to each corner there. And then it goes to my hitch for my kayak tie down. But bam, 
it's actually really fast to put on faster than a normal car cover and then uh, definitely keeps that water out but yep thinking through all the processes trying to think of everything so I don't make any huge mistakes all right uh, day two uh, today I'm going to be doing uh, mainly just fabricating patch panels welding them in so I should have I'd like to have pretty much everything welded in by the end of today and then that'll give me tomorrow to just do the uh, grinding and kind of bending and then do a little bit of fiberglass and bondo work and then the following day just finish it off so it's nice and clean um, the way I'm going to do it <coughs> is I went to the dollar 25 cent store and I get these uh, cutting mats there's two of them in here but otherwise when you just have one it's semi um, see-through so what I'll do is uh, get a felt tip marker cut out a section that I need hold it underneath the section that I'm going to be uh, needing to patch and then uh, outline it and then I'll use that to transfer it to my sheet metal trim that out and then it's a perfect fit and then that's pretty much all I have to do so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut out all the rot across there and then down to here just make it nice almost like a, a rectangle and that makes it easier to fit and then uh, get rid of all the uh, the cancerous rust and then uh, just weld in that patch so that's the plan I'll just do the same thing for all these sections now some might be questioning why I'm putting that much work in this car one it's not too much work if you kind of know what you're doing and you have the tools to do it and the time which I do so uh, it's worth it for me uh, this car has only has 130 38,000 miles on it and it's a Honda so that's really nothing I mean 200 250,000 is probably the the medium uh, range that these cars go so it's got plenty of life the other very important factor is that uh, my miles per gallon 41.8 miles per gallon and that is after 3,570 miles my average was 41.8 miles per gallon in this car so that's like awesome so you really can't beat that or it's very hard to beat that so it for me it's worthwhile since I don't uh, really do anything where I need anything bigger I mean there's a few exceptions but like getting a truck where I'm gonna get 15 maybe 20 miles a gallon and then I'm not really using it that much and this fits the kayak no problem everything fits in and I go to Miami a couple times a month without a problem so it's all good here so it's kind of worth it to put a little bit of time and effort and uh, just get this thing up and running and doesn't have to be a show car just gets me from point A to point B it is my kayak car all right so there you go I made sure to cut out all the rust just kind of squared it off to make it a little bit easier um, then ground around the edges where I'm going to be welding to it so it's nice clean metal uh, so now I'm going to do is use my little plastic to make a template cut out a little sheet of metal there and then uh, just tack it in all right so I just cut out a little piece of the cutting mat and I can just hold it over it and I can see through it and I can't do this with one hand but uh, you can see the outline and then I'll use the marker to just kind of line it out and then that'll be the exact size of the piece that I need all right so i've got my basic template set up there what size it needs to be so let me trim it off now and then place it and make sure it fits all right quick and easy just took one cut and then we've got a perfect patch there so now i just need to transfer it to my sheet of metal here all right so i basically outlined it on my sheet metal there so i just need to trim that out uh, since i'm doing the outside edge or wanting to do it to the edge I just want to cut basically the black off the metal so then I know it'll fit so I'm gonna use my trusty uh, metal cutting bandsaw for this and uh, let me cut it out real quick all right got our piece cut out there so let's go fit it up all right and there you go that patch panel is ready to be tacked on and welded but uh, I'm gonna just make the pieces so I'm just gonna go down the line and uh, just do them section at a time and then I'll come back tack them 
the welding is uh you got to stitch weld it these are actually thick enough i could probably run a bead but uh mainly up on the top stuff i'm gonna have to just stitch weld where you just kind of do a little section let it cool down do another section over here and just kind of spot hit it so let's keep on making patch panels okay it's the next morning uh i ended up not doing the welding because uh i wanted to think things some things through uh but basically i've got all the the uh, templates cut out all the patch panels all along the edge here so i've got one two three pieces to do that side there and then a couple pieces over here so they are all ready to go um, the only thing that i haven't created yet is these corners um, it's big but it's not massively difficult again i want to focus on getting the glass section finished first uh, plus i want to get all this stuff embedded and done before i do that last so i'm going to just wait on those but otherwise i think we're good to go um what i found out is these i could just weld in like normal but these um, i'm gonna have to drill holes and then just plug weld them i think that's the way they were done originally so that's what we're gonna have to do with these so it's gonna take a little bit more time but anyways we can get the welder out and do some tacking at least yeah i've got the hobart 140 ready to go the only thing i didn't think of was uh gas man i hope i have enough gas because i don't think there's anywhere around here where i can get it plus not having a car would make it very difficult um i've got flex core so if i had to i could use that so we'll hopefully have enough just to get things through so i think i'm going to do is just get stuff tacked in before i start doing the full welds and then that way at least i'll know they're mounted and after that if i have to go a different route i can but yeah, let's get this guy out and set up. Nice, love my welding cart. And this is the exact, probably 80% of why I bought this welder was this repair that I'm doing right now. So time to put it to work. All right, so I've got the bottom pieces tacked in. I got the left side tacked in. So that side is pretty much good. Um, I just got to do finish off some weld areas that I can actually get to and finish those off. But otherwise, I'm just going to rely on tack welding it. Uh, this side I've got ready to go, but I want to. It has a lot more extensive damage there, so I want to repair those first, and then spot repair these. Um, then I'll come back and weld this side in, and then finish up the welding down here, grind it all down so it's smooth, and then. Uh, I should have the track installed then i can come back and work on these corners two corners there um, the way i'm going to fix these is uh, i'm going to foam it and just shape it with a knife just to kind of get the body lines then fiberglass it to cre create some structure and then bondo it you can kind of see i did the repair on the outside here but the way the, with the glass and all those metal still there i couldn't uh, do much more than this exterior but it just kept on rusting back but this is basically the repair you got foam underneath there you got a layer a couple layers of fiberglass and then the bondo on top and then primer so it works good but uh it doesn't help if the uh if you don't get all the rust out because it's just going to eat underneath it and then uh so i cut it all the rust out on both sides so now i'm going to go back and just uh do a quick uh fiberglass bondo job finish the welding and then uh we'll be much better off so off to the store to get some foam all right use some spray foam hit these holes along the sides there um really the only thing that it's doing is giving me some structure specific the small ones it probably is not that big of a deal but the bigger ones like there and here um it creates some structure so it's like a backing so when i'm late i'm gonna let it dry then i'm gonna trim it so it basically follows the body line and then uh i'll come back over it with some fiberglass and then uh get that hard and dried and then uh, sand it down and then finish it with bondo but that's what the foam does just a quick structure 
a quick backing is all it does so we'll have to wait for that to dry all right so here we are welded ground tack welded in i'm just gonna need to grind off all those welds there um foam all the holes trim them uh, unfortunately i am out of my argon mix which is the gas my mig welder uses so i had to switch over to uh gasless and that doesn't uh, burn very well with this thin metal so it's been rough but i don't have a car so i can't drive to key west to pick up another uh, bottle so it's kind of a catch 22 but we'll make do i don't have too much left so that's where we're at all right so the fiberglass is done uh sanded it down got it rough sanded so it's all formed all the holes are filled packed we're looking good there uh, so the only thing I have to do next is to uh, put down a layer of Bondo and just kind of clean things up. A lot of little filler holes that need to be plugged. Um, anytime that there's an air bubble in the uh, fiberglass, uh, that's going to come out when I sanded it. So the Bondo will fill that up and it'll just give me a little bit smoother uh, texture there. There's a couple of little hot low spots I need to fill in, but it really doesn't make a difference because the windshield area is flush to the top so you're not going to see on anything on the inside so it's basically just the outside and those really weren't too bad just some spots up along the top where the it had rusted through same thing on this side uh, there's spots where i had to cut out the the rust so those are areas there that i want to straighten out with the bondo but otherwise not a big deal most likely it'll be primered or uh just that rubber paint so that'll cover up eighth inch gaps <laughs> so we should be all right there so let me get some bondo get that knocked out sand it down so it's rough sanded and just kind of clean and then uh all i would have left is uh i could put that side rail in and then i could get the two corners all right so i've got the right hand side of the framework installed um it's all spot welded in and then welded on the edges uh, as well as the crossover piece so the frame itself is pretty much done. I replaced all the metal, so it's all clean, ready to go. Um, also finished the fiberglassing, and then I did a Bondo over it and then rough sanded it back down to get the shape just as close as I can or reasonably. Um, now what I'm going to do is, I can only do Bondo in the evenings once the sun drops below that, otherwise it sets up so fast. I mean, I'm using like, uh, maybe more larger than a golf ball yay big and then i only do just a basically a drop maybe about an eighth of what they recommend because the heat and the humidity it just it converts it so fast so i put it the can in the refrigerator mix it up bring everything over here so i'm ready um put out my dab there and just put just one eighth of a, of a row across usually you do a full row i'm just down to about an eighth and that's with refrigerated and everything and that just gives me maybe a minute or two before it starts setting up so i have to wait for the sun to, to crest before i can do bondo but now it's getting to that point so i want to do is that do another batch of bondo but this time i'm going to add some of the uh, resin to it liquid resin mix it up so it's a little bit more watery um, and then uh, do just a skin coat over the sides there and then uh let that set just do a light sanding and then that'll be it and then i'll be done with the the body work part of it then the only thing left is doing these two sides and i haven't figured out what i want to do with the corners yet um oh, i put my mig welder away but i'm out of gas and it's just, just welding is just a big pain in the butt so i gotta figure something else but otherwise doing good all right so i got the bondo pretty much worked out uh got it down to 80 grit majority of it's pretty clean there's still a few little holes and scratches that i would have to work on but anything on the outside is no big deal because i could do that whenever um just the inside is the important part and that's all done uh now what i'm going to do is i'm going to run a bead of uh like a seam sealer type stuff some it's uh not 3m's 5200 but something like that is loctite's version but uh, I'm going to run a bead and then just finger it down so it's smooth along the corner. And that's where the uh, body meets that um, ledge that I put in for the window. So that'll seal that off and make it waterproof. 
and I do that on both sides so I'll have a nice clean seal there and uh, yeah so I'm gonna do that it takes 24 hours to uh, set so once I've got that done uh, I'm pretty much good then I can actually start working on the two uh, holes which is I've been putting off all right uh, we made our panel patch panels here for that side and that side so we're pretty lined up I am uh, so now time for some flux core <laughs> welding which is not good uh, I just cannot get a hold of any argon gas because I can't drive anywhere I was thinking about taking the bus down to the air gas in Key West that's the only place I know of that's in the Keys but I have to set up an account and give them all my banking information and basically set up a corporate account with them I don't really want to do that and plus I'd have to take the bus all the way down to the Key West and then back and that would be a whole day wasted so I'm just going to use that flux core and uh, see what I could do uh, yeah so let's weld this thing in yeah flux core sucks but it's getting there so let me clean that up and take a better look at it well it's a bit splattery but at least I'm not burning a bunch of holes in there it's sensitive enough I can kind of dab it and not make so many holes but otherwise I'm good I'll just keep plugging away at it do both sides and then uh, we'll be done with this patching all right we got both corners all roughed in um, finished the welding ground it down threw a layer of bondo on it and got it sanded down and shaped in so that's pretty good there nice and soft same on this side these things I'm not gonna put too much time I'll get them clean but uh, the windshield and then there's the gasket will cover that up so never see it same thing on this side here I'm gonna be uh, putting the uh, rubberized paint on those eventually um, so no need to do too much more than that all right we're coming down to the last steps um, I went ahead and clean every channel all across the here there's two spots here where they uh, put the glue so it's all clean bare metal um, second to last step is I'm gonna do like I did the seam seal on the edges here I'm gonna do it across the top and then down those little side rails there on either side and then once I've got that then I'm gonna tape off the line where they well I gotta fix that I cut off all the glue and left a couple of holes there but I'll fix that but uh, where the glue is going to go I'm going to put the uh, painters tape there to cover it all the way around and then uh, I'm going to primer everything else and then this will look a lot cleaner and then uh, yeah that'll be pretty much it all right we're down to the last step I uh, finished all the seam seal along the whole top area there that's kind of the main issue that started this whole problem is water dripping off my kayak funneling down and just contaminating everything yeah, the first spot it ate a hole was in that corner there. Um, so I got those seams sealed up. And I'm actually either going to put some rubber paint in those channels, or I'm thinking about just get rid of those, get rid of those channels in its entirety. So we'll have to see. Um, but otherwise, the only thing I've got left, well, the other thing I did is I got some JB Weld and uh, fixed all any of my joints, pinholes, low spots so it's nice and flush where the uh, glass is going to go although they're going to put an inch thick of uh, glue before they sandwich the uh the windshield so that'll spread out and plus they'll put primer over everything but just wanted to clean those up so there's no sharp edges there's no high spots um it's just more continuous but yeah it looks good so the last thing I'm going to do is I have to wait 24 hours for the seam seal to dry. It's the same with the JB Weld. Um, I'll go through and give it one more sanding. Um, then go over all the panels with some 120 um, sandpaper just to scuff it up, clean it up, blow it all down, wipe it all down. And then uh, I'll tape up the uh, bare metal spots where the glue is going to go. And then... Uh, I just need to hit it all with primer and that's pretty much it so I'll have a spare day where I have to wait because I don't have uh, the appointment for two more days but looking good
Alrighty, time for primer. Got it taped off. I'll use a board just to kind of block it off. So when I'm spray painting, just going to use some basic automotive primer, flat black, and then uh, that'll blend enough. So got the blue tape covered where the uh, glue will go for the windshield. I still have to do down here. I JB welded the uh, the weld areas there, so I just gonna need to do a quick uh, grind down, and then I'll do the same thing with the tape. Most of this will be painted black. I'll just have uh, one that goes across, and then there's another section along the top that I'll have uh, blocked off, so it has bare metal for the uh, the glue for the windshield. But ready to shoot some primer and get this thing looking all one tone. All right, finished the primer. So the only thing left is once it dries, I've got all the taped off areas that are gonna be bare metal where the glue for the windows are gonna go. So pretty much a rail along there, but I did get all the sides, all the external metal and a couple of layers of primer on the top as well. So that's pretty much it. Um, just gonna install, get the window installed uh, day after tomorrow. And uh, yeah, then we can go from there. I don't think I'm going to be fixing up much of this, but I could clean it up and paint it, but we'll see. All right, now my favorite part, that is putting the old shop back to work and uh, getting this disaster cleaned up. Because it is full of glass shards, metal shards, fiberglass, Bondo, dirt. Just pulling the stuff out of here, I already got slivers in my hand, I could feel them burning. Get yank out all that stuff and then just kind of get it as clean as I can. Eek. All right, there's the final revision. Uh, I went ahead and just slapped on the trimming there, the cowl, put on the windshield wipers, even though there's no glass, put on the little side covers there that blocks off the, the insides. So that all looks good. I got new uh, mounting hardware on the inside, the little plastic tab, so it all pops in nice and neat. So yeah, we're all looking good. This tape is still here. That's going to protect that uh, bare metal there. So just when he comes, I'll just peel it off, give it an alcohol rub down, and then he just got to throw the glue in the glass. But uh, yeah, now the not difficult, but yeah, the most sketchy part. I got to get this boy up to Florida City on the mainland without a windshield. All right, so I think I am ready to go. I'm packed, the car is done. I spent some time just doing a little knickknack stuff. I replaced all the little clips and snaps for all the little paneling. Um, I did some more grinding to get all the panels to line up perfectly. So everything looks really good. I went ahead and assembled everything so the car looks totally fine. Um, one thing about being a criminal and doing illegal stuff is you gotta make sure that you're smart about it. So one of the things I'm doing is I'm going at nighttime, okay, low visibility. Two, I'm going at nighttime at the window of between seven o'clock and 11 o'clock. Like I don't wanna go during the day or during five, six o'clock traffic where there's a lot of people out because a lot of cops will be out. I don't wanna go after midnight to 2, 2 a.m. because that's when the drunks are out and that's when the cops are out. Um, so I wanna be careful about that. Um, I also did a walk around my car just to make sure a visual inspection it, it's it looks okay and I got lucky because my uh, license plate light was out so I went and tapped that rubbed it around and it came back on so just some little corrosion but stuff like that is a cause for getting pulled over and then boom my dream is over so <laughs> you got to be smart about it uh, same thing with uh, going on a Tuesday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday those are no screw round days so people are not out mess around like on a weekend so that's always good so i think i'm got things done so just as long as i'm not get unlucky i should be good um only challenging thing is is that the winds are going to be blowing uh around 25 to 35 knot gusts and coming out of the northeast which is exactly exactly dead on which way i'm driving so i'll be having that wind blowing straight at me without the windshield the whole way but I drive motorcycles, so I'm used to that. I just wear sunglasses and it doesn't bother me, so we're good. I've got fully enclosed goggles, safety goggles, so I'm gonna be wearing those and it works okay. Last night I took it out for a quick dry run uh, just to blow all the dust and particles out and it was horrible, but uh, it, uh, it cleared itself out. I went through and I vacuumed and I washed out all the panels down, but still it gets everywhere and that first 
couple of miles, it was just hailstorm, but it cleaned up towards the end. So I think we're good there. Um, yeah, so I think we're ready. I'm just got to go 75 miles. Uh, if I left now, it's roughly an hour and a half, but at seven o'clock, it'll probably be about an hour and 15 minutes. So if all goes to plan, um, don't run into any cops. Uh, we should get there and be good to go. So that's the plan. All right, success, or at least half success. <laughs> we made it to Florida City Homestead. So we made it to the hotel, the car's all parked, got the tarp over it, so it's all good there. Um, got set up in the hotel. So very happy I'm here and done with that part of it. Um, dry was pretty uneventful. I saw five highway patrols just up and down, but didn't mess with me, never got close to them to worry about it. Um, did get some rain though, that was a bit of a shocker there, but it wasn't really hard rain. Well, I think there's two where it started to get to like, uh oh, this is gonna be a problem, I need to pull over. Uh, but mostly it was just like kind of a misty rain. So it would just mist for a little while, then I start worrying like, uh oh, uh oh, but then it dried up. And then uh, as soon as I go for a mile, I'm dry again. And I had a, um, a little chamois sports towel with me. Uh, very smart to bring that because I could just wipe those goggles and then they're clear again and just go till the next little spray storm. Uh, coming up the northern, north to south pass after Key Largo, I hit a, a good like, uh oh, this is like going to be bad because starting to hurt type of rain. But fortunately, it stopped right away and then I made it all the way to the hotel without a uh, problem. So yeah, we're good to go. So hopefully the uh, technician shows up in the morning and get that window put in and we're done. So I'll let you know. All right, mission accomplished. We got the wind chilled in. Oh, so happy. My stress levels have dropped like 98%. <laughs> so I went ahead and installed everything, got the windshield wipers, the cowling in there, the wind, uh, rear view mirror. Only thing I'm missing is the two corner pieces there. I have one of them, but the other one I lost. So I have to order one of those and then I have to see if the clip that it uses is good on this side. But otherwise, piece of cake, <laughs> sort of. Well, there's the view with the new windshield. So happy. I haven't seen a clean windshield in over a year. But uh, yeah, good experience. Glad it's over. Um, the guy gave me a, took a look over it, make, just took an initial look at it since I had the windshield out. Uh, he only spoke Spanish, but I have enough Spanish so we could talk. But uh, he took a quick run around and then he gave me the thumbs up and then said, let's go. And he went ahead and installed it. Um, I was very, well, in general, I'm very anal about stuff that I'm doing, but it really worked out on this trip, uh, especially from having the goggles driving up here, having my little chamois towel here to wipe off the goggles when I get misted over with the rain. Then uh, I got here to the hotel, and then last night what I did is uh, I scouted out spots in this hotel parking area, which would be best for installing because it's blowing 30 plus winds we got some uh, big storms coming through and it's raining on and off and i know that would be another deal breaker uh but i was my hotel room was on the windward side so it was getting just smashed with wind and rain so i had taken a look around and found where the best spot were to do it at and then also in case it rained uh to go under the overhang uh for the lobby but I found a spot where I wouldn't be right in front of the door and uh, they would be inconspicuous. And I did ask them, I just told them, hey, I'm gonna be out there for about 20 minutes. And they were like, ah, it don't matter. Uh, Cause it worked out uh, after checkout time frame, So they don't have anybody coming and going. So that worked out perfectly for that. Um, I, I picked a spot just in the open here, in the open parking lot on the opposite side of the wind at the leeward side and there was really no wind but as soon as he got here took a look at the car gave me the thumbs up and then he was pointing at the the sky the luvia the wind the rain he said ah that's not good i said no problem how about we go up to this spot and he goes okay thumbs up again and then from there it was probably about a half an hour install um he went ahead and uh primered up the bare metal strip that i left where i had it with tape he cleaned that put the 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 draw on a primer on that 
then uh, did all his normal stuff, put the glue on, and then stuck the, the window on with the weather strip, stripping and everything, and took his pictures, and that was it, and happy days. So I went ahead and uh, installed the cowling, like I said, the windshield wipers, they gave new windshield wipers, so I installed those, the rear view mirror, and we're good to go. So uh, it's time to head home. I think I'm gonna run by Harbor Freight real quick, pick up a couple of knickknack stuff, and then uh, get back home. All right, to reward myself for a job well done, I stopped over here at Harbor Freight since we don't have one in the Keys, and man, it would be so nice to have one. But the uh, only thing I can find, I just got a couple of tarps, one to cover my outboard motor since they're outside, and then a replacement for my smaller one, which I had been using to uh, cover the windshield area when it was leaking, but I think I still might use it for covering it when there's just normal sun, because that beats down on it. That caused probably three quarters of the cracks extending was the heat from the sun uh but i got a couple tarps and then i got a welding uh wire brushes for scrubbing your welds uh especially since i've been doing that um the the flux core welding uh i do still need to find a tank i was going to bring my tank to see if i get it filled but it's a specialty tank from uh whatever that gas company is and i still got to figure that out first but uh and also i wanted but they were out of stock on was just the bench brush that would have came handy for uh, all the uh sanding and stuff that i was doing on the bondo but even just in general cleaning off stuff but unfortunately they were out but got some stuff i'm happy so uh time to head back home hit the keys my new windshield beautiful these are the winds that i drove over here with last night it's blowing Stopped over here at Worldwide Sportsman, which is basically the Bass Pro Shops of the Keys. Checking out the competition. Now we're heading home. Well, Lord have mercy, we are done. We are home with my new windshield. My car is complete again. Ah, oh, the stress level dropped 90%. I mean. It was bad enough. It got so bad that it was actually becoming difficult to drive. I had so many cracks throughout the windshield that I was constantly just kind of moving my head trying to find like open patches for where I was wanting to see <laughs> it had gotten that bad. But the biggest part, the stress level of knowing that any cop, any law enforcement saw the car, the windshield condition, I would have been pulled over or even if it was just parked in some parking lot on the side of the street they would say like no that car is not driving anywhere ticket tow it whatever and the the biggest problem was is that it would have caused me to have to do something about it immediately right then um i have my motorcycle which does a lot but there's still i need this car to go up to miami i gotta go to key west i gotta take packages take uh, orders to the post office so i still need the car i couldn't just live without it um and then buying another car would have been an option but it's a pain in the butt it's a keys thing there's not that many people out here and there's not a lot of cars available and you never want to buy a used car out of Miami. I mean, new cars okay, but never want to buy a used car anywhere in Miami. So like this car I bought in Tampa Bay, and that's a huge ordeal from the Keys all the way over back around to Tampa. Oh, that was a nightmare just to get this car, but it was just so worthwhile. But the biggest risk, like I said, was immediately having to do something. Um, I could fix it without a problem, but I've been actually prepping to do this repairs for almost a year and a half um, and it's not just the windshield but I also had the whole back roof and corners were also wiped out as well and I did those about four or five months ago but it's about having like all the tools all the parts uh, looking up what needs to be done research and stuff but just getting all that stuff put together took me a year and a half. That's almost the reason why I built my patio workshop and got all that equipment and been buying lots of tools and lots of tools because I knew I was going to need them for this thing. And I needed it for all this stuff to get it done, even though it took, I think, five days round trip to get everything done. But I mean, everything stopped. I didn't do anything except deal with this car stuff for a week. Uh, 
But yeah, that's why I haven't been putting out videos. I haven't been wanting to promote all about the bait. I just wanted to shut everything down so I could focus on getting this because miss one tool, miss one part, and then it's a week waiting because you can only get harbor. I mean, uh, there's no harbor freight in the key. So if you can't find it at Home Depot or Ace Hardware, then you have to Amazon it. And then that could be a week. So it took a lot of prep time. And if I had gotten busted six months ago, then it would have been that same problem. I wouldn't have all the stuff that I needed. I'd tear it down. Oh, I need this tool. And then wait a week to get it and then keep going. And, oh, I forgot that I needed that. And oh, forget that. And then it would have just, it would have been a month long process, but oh, so much stress off. Even this last day of the, the drive up, dealing with the stormy weather, the, it's the worst two days of the, of the month. 30 knots up to 35s, rain, no windshield, worried about getting pulled over on the way up there and the dream ending, uh, having the car getting towed someplace and then having to pay to get it towed up to, to Miami and then missing my appointment and having to reschedule and, oh, stressed me out, man. But we're good, so very happy with it. Uh, I think I'm gonna do another video just all, I didn't do videos of me actually working on it, but I did do progress videos on all the different steps and I'll do a video about all the different tools and stuff that I used and I'll do that on a separate one. But other than that, we're good to go. I've got uh, three big projects stacked up, ready to go that I'm gonna start working on today, starting on, and uh, some other All About the Bait stuff. And I got tons of new All About the Bait products I gotta get out there and start testing and using and adding to the workshop and to the website so plus it's a busy season coming up here november uh thanksgiving time is generally the start of the busy season so yeah but i am so happy i'm done with this car uh the only thing left is is that i gotta wait a few months and i'm gonna see if any rust pokes its ugly head out of the, any of the areas here. I cut everything out, so I should be good, but just in case any rust shows up, then I'll know I'll have to dig through that, dig it back down, cut it out, and then rebuild it back up again. But if I don't see any rust, then I can go ahead and paint or uh, do like a bed liner coating or something with the, basically from the door level up to the roof and just get that all one color and make it look a little bit better than just the primer. But otherwise, that's it. Happy days. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next video. Bye. Happy Steve.